From fixing some of his most celebrated fights to consuming copious amounts of drugs and alcohol, Mike has messed up a lot during his career. But he's changed a lot recently. I know you've heard about the new Mike by now. It's hard to miss. But despite the fact most people are supportive of the new change, everyone remembers how he used to be before. Iron Mike was incredible, sure. But was he really the undefeatable boxer he put himself out to be? This idea mostly came after analyzing the circumstance around the Joe Cortez fight that set his reputation. In the opening of the second round, Mike ran towards him like a man possessed, throwing punches left and right at Joe. He flattened Joe in less than 10 seconds and made history. But how much more experience could a 15-year-old have compared to a 24-year-old? People claim that the fight was fixed to set up Mike as a scary and unstoppable 15-year-old fighter. The fitting of of the title Iron Mike. Well, it might seem a little far-fetched, but it's not completely impossible. But hey, whether that fight was fixed or not, you have to admit that Tyson is the absolute best in the ring. At the left hands, which did the damage. Well, Tyson now starting to find his rank. The left hook there pretty much did spoke for itself. I mean, do you remember his fight against Frank Bruno? That was one of the best knockouts in boxing. And of course, that wasn't the only one. I could list so many fights where Mike proved that he was one of the best fighters out there. And no, he didn't win every fight on my list. But still, it's the thought that counts. Take the Buster Douglas fight as an example. Buster won, but Tyson put up a good fight. In the eighth round, he nearly won. But you know what they say, saved by the bell. The closing seconds of this, the first one. Wow! With the right hand is Buster Douglas, and Mike comes right back and answers it with a wild left hand. It usually isn't used in this context, but still. And then there's the Evander Holyfield 2 fight. He was disqualified in that one. But man, is that fight interesting. The fact that he bit Evander's ears twice. Most people believe this was because he knew he couldn't win and decided he'd rather get disqualified. Of course, I can name a number of fights where he won, too. Buster Mathis has to be one of his best fights. This was just after he got out of prison. He wasn't in a good position, not only physically and mentally, but also in the MMA world. The once undefeated Mike Tyson was nothing but a criminal now. And of course, he had to prove himself. Right there and again, he plows into Tyson in the ropes. A fighter doesn't have as much power backing up. The MMA world wasn't exactly wrong in thinking that he'll lose. After all, prison isn't kind to anyone's physical health. And Buster? He was sure he was going to win. But overconfidence is the key to losing. He walked into the ring as if he owned it and started out strong, expecting Mike to be overpowered easily. A fatal mistake on his side because Tyson wasn't there to lose. Tyson going up against a guy almost shorter. That was one knockout Tyson fans will always remember. This isn't the only fight worth mentioning. There's always his fight with Larry Holmes. And I know that the fact that he won wasn't all that impressive seeing Larry was, well, old. This is the way you would expect to see Larry fight him and wonder if it will frustrate the younger Mike Tyson. But Tyson was there to avenge his childhood hero and idol, Muhammad Ali, and the very aura he gave while he was dead set on making every second of the fight count really makes watching worth it. And if you want the typical boxing fight driven by bloodthirst and just general excitement to fight and win, there's his fight with Trevor Burbick. But be warned, it was over pretty quick. With all of this, I think it would be rather disappointing to find out that Tyson fixed one of his most iconic fights but maybe not that much of a surprise. I mean, wasn't he the one to admit that he was taking drugs for a number of his major fights? And he went through some extremely drastic measures to avoid getting caught? He also explained that the reason he had lost control before the Lennox Lewis fight was cocaine. For those of you who don't know what happened, during the press conference to reveal their upcoming fight, Tyson went up to Lewis and attacked him for no apparent reason. He later even admitted to biting the other fighter's leg.
leg. Mike was, of course, fined for his misconduct. In the end, the downfall of Mike's career can be attributed to his alcohol and drug addiction. It resulted in him having more controversies than wins and was unstable both in and out of the ring. He kept suffering from this all the way until 2009. After that, he finally started rehab and even began a vegan diet. Well, nowadays, Mike is in a much better place than he used to be and has more or less turned his life around. But as much as a problem his drug and alcohol addiction was, it wasn't the reason he went to jail. Mike went to prison in 1992 after he was found guilty of sexually assaulting an 18-year-old. Desiree Washington, a beauty pageant contestant, accused Mike of assaulting her after she followed him back to his room after a rehearsal of the beauty pageant. Mike, on the other hand, has denied the accusations and insists that anything that happened between the two was consensual. Mike was convicted in March of 1992 and sentenced to 10 years in prison, but it was later reduced to six years with four years of probation. In the end, he was released after spending only three years in jail. But Mike's drug addictions and sexual assault might not be the only negative thing about him. Apparently, he even used to fix fights. I'm sure all Iron Mike fans will remember the champion's fight against 24-year-old Joe Cortez when he was merely 15 years old. Even at such a young age, you could clearly see Mike's speed and agility, which he's famous for. In the end, Joe simply had no chance. In the opening of the second round, Mike ran towards him like a man possessed, throwing punches left and right at Joe. He flattened Joe in less than 10 seconds and made history. This can be considered considered more or less what kickstarted Mike's career in boxing. But it seems like not everyone sees it as an incredible feat performed by an up-and-coming star destined for greatness. Instead, some people claim that Mike was more or less handed the win because of his fame and reputation. There have been reports that leading up to the fight, Joe was struggling with his physical health. I mean, that would put him at a disadvantage. But these are unconfirmed reports. Another thing people have pointed out is that Mike had more experience than Joe. But again, did he really, though? After all, boxing benefited heavily from a global star like Muhammad Ali, so it isn't completely impossible that they wanted another one so bad they decided to mold young Mike into one. Not that it would have benefited them much, since even though Mike did become a boxing legend, he was constantly embroiled in controversy. Well, after his retirement in 2005, Mike certainly changed his ways. He's much better off both financially and mentally, not to mention he's been involved in the cannabis industry and hosts the highly popular Hot Boxing Podcast. Mike even decided to come out of retirement in 2020 for an exhibition match with Roy Jones Jr. Iron Mike didn't win as the fight ended in a draw, but he was still lauded for his performance. At the end of the day, whatever Mike did in his boxing days is behind him now that he's changed his ways and retired from the sport. Well, this is all for Mike's controversies and his latest one about how he might have fixed his fights.